always interests me is when someone is introduced to an audience. Does that audience really, really feel what they have? Coming up. Dale Carnegie, the author of How to Win Friends and Influence People, revealed that everyone's subject, favorite subject is themselves or himself or herself. And the sweetest sound to one's ear is their own name. To hear one's own name in a well-written introduction can benefit an audience and the speaker, especially if it's written by the speaker. Not everyone believes in the concept of the importance of a speech introduction. There have been times when I've seen Toastmasters writing out their introductions right before. Right or wrong? Or does that really give the audience, or are they writing the same thing? There are those who have written an introduction and wondered if it's too much or not enough. There are Toastmasters who are given an already written introduction by the speaker and they add their own lines and stories that can sometimes even fluster the most prepared Toastmaster coming up here. A well written speech introduction can be challenging to organize, yet a necessary part of every Toastmaster meeting. This series is part of the Better Speakers series called Creating an Introduction. Uh, again, as Vicki said, I will, if you have any questions afterwards, we'll talk about it. The importance of an introduction. Making a transition. When our members come up here to speak, they're about to take on a new role. The introduction defines the role and prepares the audience to shift gears from the previous activities, sort of like the 90 second training tip, or someone singing their commitment to a song, well, it also refocuses their interest and attention to the speaker. Also, the proper mindset. Audience members are most likely to appreciate a speech if given some background information about the speaker and the topic to be discussed. A skill for an introduction can set the tone or mood for that speech. Speaker authority. At speech contests, as many of you have been to speech contests, all they give is the speaker's name and the topic. Well, what that does is that gives a neutral boundary for the judges. But in a typical Toastmasters meeting, we need a little bit more. We need to make sure that we get established the speaker, their expertise on the subject, and also if they were giving a subject such as, for instance, education. When they get up here, the speaker may say that, it might be in the introduction that the speaker has kids in school or is a school board member. That establishes right there they know something about education. Now, how it's done, a, a speech should be with the essentials of being brief. It's assigned to present and also a couple of the points for the audience. One thing that you always want to do is the speaker's name. I don't know how many times I've seen been at speech contests or being at speech and they actually get the speaker's name wrong and just see the speaker's face and then they have to come back up. So what you want to do is make sure that you can say the name distinctly and clearly, especially at the, inner, the end of the introduction. If the name has a tricky pronunciation, confirm the right way to say it, but also write it out phonetically. Ask the speaker the right, correct way to say their name. Also, the topic. Relate the speaker's background and credentials to the speech topic. Then tell the audience a little bit how the topic's going to go and how it will benefit you. Now, if you, from this presentation, look at your introductions a little bit different, that would be something that will help you enhance you when you're coming up to the lecture. One other thing that also needs a little bit of is the title of the speech. It's typically mentioned at the end of the introduction, but it's also something that needs a little bit of a special emphasis. Not only the name of the speaker, but also the topic. If you're looking at Toastmasters Essentials, if you're introducing a fellow Toastmaster, your, introduce, your introduction should have some of these things. Special assignment. Will the speaker be speaking from the basic communicator and leadership program manuals, or will they be doing an advanced manual? 
Now, one of the things that we do here, we write mostly our own introductions. So the speaker or the Toastmaster really doesn't have to write anything. But those things, if you are writing your own introduction, needs to be done. Also, the speech objectives. Some of you come up here and there's something that you want your evaluator to look at. Maybe there's something you want the audience to look at. But the, the manuals and how they are and what you're doing make sure that those people know exactly what you're doing. What are the personal objectives of your speech? You may say it in the in introduction. Delivery time. If the timer. How long is the speech supposed to last? Is the person operating the timing, the timer, do they know? And if they're not, they should, of course, be informed at that time. One of the things that a Toastmaster should do when they practice the introduction, take the time to look over the introduction. You know, how many people do that? We've seen it when people have gone up here. And you can tell they just read it off and they add some things and they stumble over some things. That should be one of the things as a courtesy to the speaker is to practice the introduction. And also a couple, a few more do's. A friendly environment. I look at your faces right now. <laughs> friendly. No one looking at me like they want to kill me. It's a friendly. And when I was introduced, it was friendly. A smile came on Mickey's face. That set the tone of what was going on. I don't see it there now, but it was there when... <laughs>